It is right that I, a woman black, should speak of white womanhood. My husband's, my father's, my brother's, my son's die for it because of it and their blood chilled in electric chairs stopped by hangman's noose cooked by lynch mob's fire spilled by white supremacists mad desire to kill for profit gives me that right I would that I could speak of white womanhood as it will and should be when it stands tall in full equality. But then womanhood will be womanhood, void of color and of class, and all necessity for my speaking thus will be passed, gladly passed. But now, since it is deemed a thing apart, supreme, I must in searching honesty report how it seems to me. White womanhood stands in blooded skirt and in slavery, reaching out adulterous hands, killing mine and crushing me. What then is this superior thing that in order to be sustained must needs feed upon my flesh? How came this horror to be? Let's look to history. They said, the white supremacists said, that you were better than me. That your fair brow should never know the sweat of slavery. They lied. White woman who too is enslaved, the difference is degree. They brought me here in chains. They brought you here, willing slaves to man. You, shiploads of women, each filled with hope that she might win with ruby lip and saucy curl and bright and flashing eye, him to wife who had the largest tender, remember. And they sold you here even as they sold me. My sisters, there is no room for mockery. If they counted my teeth, they did appraise your thigh, sold you to the highest bidder, the same as I. And you did not fight for your right to choose whom you would wed. But for whatever bartered price that was the legal tender, you were sold to a stranger's bed in a stranger land. Remember, and you did not fight, mind you, I speak not mockingly, but I fought for freedom. I'm fighting now for our unity. We are women all, and what wrongs you murders me and eventually marks your grave. So we share a mutual death at the hand of tyranny. They trapped me with a chain, the gun. They trapped you with lying tongue. For lest you see that fault, that villainy, that robbed you of name, voice, and authority, that murderous greed that wasted you and me. He, the white supremacist, fixed your minds with poisonous thought. White skin is supreme. And therewith bought that monstrous change, exiling you to things changed all that nature had in you wrought of gentle usefulness abolishing your spring tore out your heart 
set your good apart from all that you could say, think, feel, know to be right, and you did not fight, but set your minds fast on my slavery, the better to endure your own. Tis true, my pearls were beads of sweat, wrung from weary body's pain. Instead of rings upon my hands, I wore swollen, bursting veins. My ornaments were the whiplash scar. My diamond, perhaps a tear. Instead of paint and powder, on my face I wore a solid mask of fear to see my blood so spilled. And you, women, seeing, spoke no protest, but cuddled down in your pink slavery and thought somehow my wasted blood confirmed your superiority. Because your necklace was of gold, you did not notice that it throttled speech. Because diamond rings bedecked your hands, you did not regret their dictated idleness. Nor could you see the platinum bracelets which graced your wrists were chains, binding you fast to economic slavery. And though you claimed your husband's name, still could not command his fidelity. You bore him sons. I bore him sons. No, not willingly. He purchased you. He raped me. I fought. But you fought neither for yourselves nor me. Sat trapped in your superiority and spoke no reproach. Consoled your outrage with an added brooch. Oh, God. How great is a woman's fear, who for a stone, a cold, cold stone, would not defend honor, love, nor dignity. You bore the shaming mockery of your marriage and heaped your hate on me, a woman too, a slave more so. And when your husband disowned his seed that was my son and sold him apart from me, you felt avenged. Understand, I was not your enemy in this. I was not the source of your distress. I was your friend. I fought, but you would not help me fight, thinking you helped only me. Your deceived eyes, seeing only my slavery, aided your own decay. Yes, they condemned me to death. And they condemned you to decay. Your heart whisked away. Consumed in hate, used up in idleness, playing yet the lady's part. Estranged to vanity, it is justice to you to say your fear equal their tyranny. You were afraid to nurse your young, lest fallen breasts offend your master's sight. And he should flee to firmer loveliness. And so, you pass them, your children, on to me. Flesh that was your flesh. Blood that was your blood. Drank the sustenance of life from me. And as I gave suck, I knew I nursed my own child's enemy. I could have lied, told you your child was fed till it was dead of hunger, but I could not find the heart to kill orphaned innocence, for as it fed, it smiled. 
and burped and gurgled with content. And as for color, you know difference. Yes, in that first while, I kept your sons and daughters alive. But when they grew strong, in blood and bone that was of my milk, you taught them to hate me. You gave them the words, Mammy and Nigger, so that strength that was of myself turned and spat upon me. Despoiled my daughters and killed my sons. You know I speak true. No, this is not true for all of you. When I bestirred myself for freedom and brave Harriet led the way, some of you found heart played a part in aiding my escape. And when you made your push for freedom, my sons fought at your son's side. My husbands and brothers, too, fell in that battle where Crispus Attox died. It is unfortunate that you acted not in the way of justice, but to preserve the union. And of course, for dear sweet pity's sake. Else how came it to be as it is with me today? You hated slavery, yet abhorred equality. I would that the poor among you could have seen through the scheme and joined hands with me. Then we, being the majority, could long ago have rescued our wasted lives. But no. The rich, becoming richer, could be content, while yet the poor had only the pretense and sought through murderous brutality to convince themselves that what was false was true. And so with Ku Klux Klan and fiery cross and blooded appetites set about to prove that what is right, forgetting their poverty. Thus the racist used your skins to perpetuate your slavery. And woe to me. Woe to the boy Emmett Till. And woe to you. It is no mistake that your naked bodies on the calendars announce the fatal dates. This is what they plan for you. This is the depravity they would reduce you to. Death for me. And worse than death for you. What will you do? Will you fight with me? White supremacy is your enemy and mine. So, be careful when you talk with me. Remind me not of my slavery. I know it well. But rather, tell me of your own. Remember, you have never known me. You've been seeing me as white supremacy would have me be. But I will be myself. Free, justice, peace, plenty for every man, woman, child who walks this earth. This is my fight. If you will fight with me, then take my hand that our land may come at last to be a place of peace and human equality for there is love there is the serpent and there is the dove